chapter even by your word the bible says the lord appeared again to samuel in shiloh by his word an encounter by your word tonight that will change my life in jesus name we pray the bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion you do not appear before the Lord and go down you do not appear before the Lord and go back to yesterday it is always from strength to strength to strength to strength he says now the Lord is that spirit there are many spirits but the Lord is that spirit that spirit that lifts that spirit that blesses he says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And then he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of God. He says, we are changed. We are changed. You never remain when you see him. You change. You change. You change. What does it mean to change? That what had victory over you yesterday no longer can have victory over you today because you have changed that the words that came out from your lips that was downplayed by demons because it was powerless that the next time you speak that changed version of you will speak words that carry authority in the spirit hallelujah my dear people you sing one more song for me spirit lead me where my trust Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander. My faith That's what is happening to someone tonight. In the presence of my faith. Spirit Spiritly when my trust is without border. Let me walk upon the water wherever you will come. One more time. Spirit leads. Let me walk upon the water wherever you will call. Take me deeper. Take me deeper than my feet could ever walk. My faith. Can we sing it one more time? Just the voices. Spirit Let me walk upon the water wherever you are. Sing me deeper. my feet My feet could make stronger. And the Bible says, when Jacob dismissed his wives, his cattle, the Bible says he was left alone. And there came a man to him by night and wrestled with him. And Jacob refused to let that man go. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed the bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him 
and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel it says for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved father give us an encounter that will transform our lives tonight give us encounters that will shift us to new spiritual dimensions and I pray that Jesus be glorified tonight in Jesus name I pray God bless you please be seated in the presence of the Lord hallelujah we have very serious business tonight and I want you to coordinate your attention by the Spirit reject every form of distraction tonight because there are certain teachings that are applicable to certain people there are teachings that are applicable to a particular gender or age range or um, geographic um, region but there are teachings that are applicable to all men provided you are alive and provided you are a man these teachings are very important and tonight is one of such teachings and it is my prayer that the Lord would cause that your time spent here tonight would be a a destiny defining moment in the name of Jesus appreciate us everyone for the sacrifice within the auditorium outside everywhere Azaria family following and our global family following online may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ let me by way of honor just appreciate um, his excellency in our midst the ambassador I Anderson Madubike the Nigerian ambassador to Australia God bless you thank you God bless you bless you an honor to have you in the presence of the Lord sir may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ let's celebrate him amazing such a humble man thank you thank you thank you now he's insisting to say something we'll honor you please come up sir the Lord bless you hallelujah let's give him a minute even if it's just to say hello God bless you God bless you I'm embarrassed by this now God bless you thank you a turning point of my life I've been praying my whole life to meet him I've been in diplomatic service for 29 years God has blessed me so much but I know the blessing that I'm going to get today will take me to another level he's the only person I call the apostle of God in this great country I am honored to meet you God is good. Thank you. Let's bless him. Very, very humbling from His Excellency, the Nigerian Ambassador to Australia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Indeed, the Lord will do you good in the name of Jesus. And every other special person here, may God bless you. This is Koinonia, the house of God. Praise God. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, and a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's get straight to the word tonight. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. Mighty God. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17 
Let me turn it very quickly so that we begin our teaching. Shali para kuske anamadakata. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, I'm reading from my Bible, King James, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Then it says, To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. Grant us understanding, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight's teaching is specially dedicated to those who have made a determination under God that they will live fruitful lives and lives that are dedicated to glorifying Jesus. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to people, men and women, who have made up their minds that they will fulfill their divine call in Christ. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to those who have obtained the help and the mercy of God in their various endeavors and have tasted certain levels of greatness and certain levels of success. Tonight's message is also dedicated to those who have become weary as far as pursuing the purposes of God for their lives are concerned. Men and women who have been beaten down by the vicissitudes of life and are seeking perspective and an explanation as to the happenings around their lives. Tonight's teaching is also dedicated to those who are about to begin their journey as far as their spiritual experiences and destiny is concerned. So if you belong to any of these categories aforementioned, you're welcome to a teaching that indeed will transform your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many names that believers are called in scripture. Theologically speaking, believers are classified in two groups. When, when God gives us our naming, we are classified in two groups broadly. There is the name that a believer is given by reason of his oneness with Christ. These are the names that come on account of the privilege of the new birth. For instance, the Bible calls us sons of God. The Bible calls us believers. The Bible calls us one with Christ. It calls us joint heirs with Christ and even heirs of God. Jesus himself was teaching in John 15 and he said, I am the vine and he calls us branches grafted by that substitutionary sacrifice to the vine. But there are other names that he calls us, not just based on identification, but based on function. For instance, he calls us light. For instance, he calls us salt. He calls us ambassadors. He calls us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. These are names that attempt to describe our function. But there are other names that are used in scripture as a testament of endurance, as a testament of the strength and the stamina that an individual can derive from within his spirit. Many of them, but one of them that is very important for the teaching tonight is called an overcomer the bible uses that term an overcomer to describe a believer who has sustained the grace and the stamina to run this race and to finish with honor and with dignity 
Hallelujah. That it is possible for a believer in addition to being one with Christ, in addition to being the son of God, in addition to uh, the revelation of our, our identification, and then in addition to the names given as far as our function is concerned, that you can, you can receive this addition like a credential that more than the son of God that you are, more than light and salt, more than a king and a priest, more than an ambassador, more than all of these names, there is a noble name that only the mouth of the Lord can call a believer. It's called an overcomer. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And then it says to him, so this is not a message to everyone. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. I will give. To eat of the hidden manna. Hmm. Number two. I will give him a white stone. A stone with a name written on it. Which no man knows except the one who is given. Look at this kind of complicated reward just for being an overcomer. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that in the entire lifetime of any individual for that matter, not necessarily a believer, any individual that is privileged to walk upon the face of this earth, the Bible lets us know that God is not only the God of all flesh, but he's also the God of times and the God of seasons. We have dealt with the law of seasons. Please do well to listen to that teaching. And that in your pursuit and your journey towards the knowledge of God, towards fulfilling your divine call and assignment towards destiny, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the possibility exists that you can be challenged by situations and circumstances that attempt to impede your journey, number one, or attempt to fight you, or attempt to stop you from finishing that journey, or even attempt to stop you from starting the journey. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that these possibilities exist. Hallelujah. Yeah. The second information that is very interesting and important is that no single person wearing a mortal body is immune from the reality of these seasons. That the only thing we are, the guarantee that we are given in Christ is that we can sustain the grace and the intelligence to rise above them. But that in a man's lifetime, it must be captured in your human experience. Seasons that represent pain, seasons that represent discomfort, seasons where defeat looks imminent. This is a reality that we see even in the life of Jesus, our pattern man. The Bible tells us to look on to Jesus, calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him. The next word after that is endurance. The Bible says he endured. You would think that because we are dealing with Jesus, you would not have to use such an expression for one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Why will the fountain of wisdom need to endure? Why will he who is the captain of the host of heaven, why would you associate the creator with that word endurance? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Then number two, he says, despise the shame. Two things he did that the Bible says is very instructive. That in following Jesus, we must pay attention to the fact that even Jesus was not immune from pain and shame. Now, most people in church, most believers in the body of Christ have not been taught the spiritual systems put in place to deal with these seasons and these times. In as much as 
we teach on victory in as much as we teach on the invincibility of the believer as far as his association with the Christ is concerned we must be honest and matured enough to expose believers to the things that befall all men and to prepare their hearts so that if and when these seasons come the believers can sustain stamina to be able to go through these seasons and then return victorious are we together now so for instance we've had believers who have gone through unpleasant situations say during the pandemic and after the pandemic people have lost money who love Jesus with all their hearts people have lost loved ones without answers there are people who the equation of their lives and destinies in spite of their committal to the things of God it doesn't seem to add up and many of them continue to ask secret questions and that is the responsibility of a shepherd in Christ to be able to bring perspective and light to issues even difficult issues like this are we together first Peter chapter 4 and verse 12 media let's walk together please first Peter chapter 4 from verse 12 to 16 Apostle Peter is teaching us now and here's what he had to say beloved he said so he's talking to those who are in Christ beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you he says as though some strange thing happened to you this is a very powerful information from a matured Christian who is an apostle he's teaching and training you that you must be able to build a level of strength and stamina in the spirit that if and when you are confronted with uncomfortable situations that you do not address them as though some some mysterious thing were happening to you it says but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of Christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and God rested upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified 15 but none of you let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief so there are different dimensions of suffering now and as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters last verse these are various things that have sufferings attached to them yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf scripture number two psalm 61 from verse one to three this is the cry of one who has been put down in life this is a distress a distress cry coming from a sincere heart unto god hear my cry oh god he says attend unto my prayer verse 2 from the end of the earth will I cry unto you in other words no matter where you are oh God hear me when my heart is overwhelmed hmm, it says lead me to the rock that is higher than I for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy so the bible lets us know that it is possible listen carefully it is possible for a believer to go through a season in his life in the life of a ministry in the life of an organization in the life of a family in the life of a nation and in the life of a continent where it seems as though the word of God is not producing the kind of result that you believe for it to produce. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. 
It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity. Everyone say the day of adversity. December 25th in Nigeria and across the body of Christ is generally, it's been a day that has been earmarked to celebrate Christmas. Is that true? Wherever you are across the world, once it's December 25th, usually people celebrate Christmas. There are days earmarked to celebrate Easter. Um, other religions like, like our Islamic brothers have days where they can select to celebrate different, you know, activities. Other religions have days. Now, the Bible is telling you that is not the only day you should pay attention to. That there is another day, please give it to us, called the day of adversity. Not the hour of adversity. Not the minute of adversity. Day there does not just mean 24 hour. It means season. There is a season of adversity. And he's giving you an information up hand. That if you faint in the day of adversity... It is because your strength is small. It is not because the adversity naturally should sustain the power to overwhelm you. But you did not build strength for that day. Are we still together? In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll begin our reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he began to pray for them that they be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Everybody say strengthened with might in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Uh-huh may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasseth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Next verse. It says, Now unto him hmm, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, but all that is according to the power that works in us. Not just according to his power. According to the capacity that works in us. Last verse says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. So the Bible encourages us to be strengthened with might in the inner man. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, again, Apostle Paul is teaching here. And he says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Do not be weary. He's mentioning a word here now. That there is also a, there is a relationship, a strange relationship between weariness and well-doing. That a man can be involved in well-doing. And yet be wary. He leaves you with an information that provides comfort. He says for in due season we will reap. If, if there is a condition. If we faint not. That means even if you have been um, committed to well doing. If you faint, you may not survive the times where the harvest will come for you. I do not know one great man. Who became great properly with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Who does not have a story of these seasons of adversity. Whether in ministry, whether in business. In fact, the Bible lists the credentials of the kinds of people you should follow. It says, follow them who through faith and patience. If you find results that did not come through faith and patience, it's advising you to run away because something is wrong with that result. Are we together now? Follow them, he says, who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is very important for us to know that adversity is a reality that will attempt every life every family sooner or later 